Oh, maybe I should bring the palette. Hey good people, welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for a little bit today. Man, it's been a nice trip to Iceland. This is the grand finale today, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm sad, but I'm happy to be moving on to something else. Maybe another destination later this month, we'll see. But um, if you want to hear about where we're going today for our last day in Iceland, keep on watching this video. Let me know what you think. Are you still down for this trip? And definitely consider subscribing and joining the community. You know, I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. Yeah, y'all, so I, I think that we are down for this trip. I really would like for it to happen in real life. And I'm serious about some of y'all coming, like we can make this happen now. Don't know when outside is really opening up, like to a point where I'm gonna feel comfortable. But once it does, this is definitely gonna be a destination where I would absolutely love to go. And I'm just so thankful that I purchased this palette the Nomad palette. Once again, didn't talk about what we're using because I'm assuming everybody's watched the other videos, but um, this is my first experience with Nomad Cosmetics. This is a husband and wife duo who own the company. This is an indie brand and they base all of their palettes and products on places where they've traveled. And I have five of their palettes. I'm really, really excited to see where their next destination is. Let's just one more time, last look at this baby here in this wonderful palette. I will link the other three videos that I've done with this palette above. In my first video, I did swatch all of the shades and explain the origin of the shade names. So if you're interested in that type of thing, that's where you'll be able to uh, find all that information. Now, so far on our trip, we've talked about accommodations. We've talked about the Northern Lights. What else did we talk about? Well, the very first video we did, um, I did a lot of history, like I said, of the names of mythology and just an overview of the island. And today we are gonna be visiting Reykjavik, which is the only city in Iceland. And we're also gonna visit the Blue Lagoon. So I'm really excited because you don't wanna to go to Iceland without visiting those two places. Also, the look that I'm doing today is gonna be inspired by the water or the ice. So that's what the look is gonna to be today. Now I did do my face first today and we are gonna get started. Try to dress appropriately for the weather in Iceland. <sighs> let's see, so let's see, let's see uh, the temperature today, let's see. So in Reykjavik, it is currently 32 degrees. They had some storms this morning and a 50% chance of rain. So what is it here? Let's see what it is in Baltimore. It's 35 degrees here. We've had some snow and some freezing rain and it's, it's starting to melt now, but like yesterday and the day before, it was just an icy mess. Like the first day was like the fluffy snow, but then overnight it rained and then it just, it just got ugly. So glad to see that melting. For today's look, I'm gonna be pretty much focusing in this area here. So we're looking at Frigg, we are looking at God's Waterfall, and I'm looking at Niflheim and maybe Njord. Really focusing on the blue and then probably have some type of inner corner pop. Not sure what color that's gonna be. So let's get right into it. Now when we fly into Iceland, the international airport is Keflavik. Let me make sure I'm saying that right. I think it's Keflavik, there it is. Keflavik, yes. And Keflavik, as I said, is the international airport. It's gonna be about a 45 minute drive to Reykjavik. And again, most of the population of Iceland does live in Reykjavik. Now to get there, again, um, in my last video I was saying, you do wanna, you probably wanna rent a car. Now car rentals can be really expensive, like 200 some dollars a day. So even though the flight to Iceland is cheap, in most of my research, people have paid around like $250 to get to Iceland round trip, like out of New York. But once you get there, Iceland is expensive. And you know, to make sure that you see all that you wanna see while you're there, 
you are going to spend some money. It depends on the attractions that you want to see. Iceland has the Northern Lights. We talked about that. We talked about the bubble hotels that allow you to sleep outside under the Northern Lights and hopefully you'll get to see them. Iceland has a road called Ring Road that goes all the way around the country and there's lots of things to see. There are waterfalls. There are active volcanoes. There are many hot springs outside from the Blue Lagoon. The Blue Lagoon is actually like a man-made lagoon and the water is channeled from from somewhere else, but there are natural hot springs all around, some of which are free. What else we wanna see? Well, you definitely wanna get some of the food that's there. What else? If you don't rent a car, you're gonna to have to take a taxi or a bus. And there are lots of tours, day tours and things like that that you can do. All right, so it's not gonna be a cheap trip, y'all. That's what I'm saying. Let me know if you're not trying to go because like I said in my last video, you know how things sound real good and then what happens is when you start like really planning, all of a sudden people start backing out. You know how that goes. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. So I'm taking this shade Frig, which is this shade right here. This is gonna be my transition shade. So we're gonna get to um, Reykjavik. And Reykjavik is so cute. It's like a little, it reminds me of a quaint city, but bigger than a quaint city. I don't know how to explain it. It kind of reminds me of, so I'm from Baltimore and we have an area, two areas. We have Fells Point, which is um, east of downtown. And we have Federal Hill, which is south of downtown. And it kind of reminds me of that on a bigger level. Lots of like quaint little shops, people walking around. They have this really uh, beautiful church um, that's there and it just looks like a nice place to visit and to walk around. And from my research, it's a great place to get around on foot. So I definitely think I would want to stay in Reykjavik for a couple of days. Now they do have those hostels. I know we're, we already decided we don't want to stay in that type of accommodation. So the regular hotels are going to be pricey, but it's all a part of the trip. Staying in Reykjavik, you can do day trips and day tours of different things. You can do a day tour of the Blue Lagoon and some of the other sites. But also you want to spend some time in the city itself. One of the things that I would love to try are their fish and chips. I watched a few videos on that and yeah, I want to, I want some fish and chips because I like fried fish. So that's one of the things I would love to try over there. And I would also like to try like some of their hearty soups. I saw a really great lobster soup and mm, it looked a little runny at the top at first, but she should have mixed it up cause she didn't do that. And then the lobster pieces were at the bottom. You gotta mix up the soup, you know, but that looked really good. Like the food just looked good. They have something called skier. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's almost like a yogurt. Those are the main things I saw that I would want to try, but I'm sure there's plenty more wonderful foods that are there. And the city just looked cute. It just looked cute. So, and they have like fast food spots. Like they had a subway there. If you don't want to try the local food, they have the, the fast food places like a subway. Oh my God, my principal's calling. How did you get a nice leg? I talked about the food, the lobster soup, stirring it up. Yeah. Okay, let's um, move on to the Blue Lagoon. I am going to be using the shade Niflheim or Niflheim right here. And I'm gonna attempt to do a bit of a halo eye situation. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to put Frigg under the lower lash line and then I will uh, go ahead with that uh, halo. So, Blue Lagoon. Now, the Blue Lagoon is expensive. This is a very popular tourist attraction. And because of that, you are paying. Again, there are hot springs in Iceland that are free around the country. Don't know how easy they are to get to. Don't know if they have all of the same components in the water or the amenities that are in the Blue Lagoon. So let's talk about pricing. They have different levels of packages that you can purchase when you go. 
but out the gate, you're going to pay $58 just to get in. Now that includes a complimentary mud mask. Now the mud mask is made from silica and silica and algae are what is found in the water in the blue lagoon. And both of those uh, things have some anti-aging properties. It is believed that they have anti-aging properties. So the complimentary mud mask is nice, but that's all you're gonna get for $58. You're not getting nothing to drink. You're not getting a towel. You're not getting any food. You just have access to the pool and you have the complimentary mud mask. I can already say that I am going to be spending more than $58 because I need a towel. Like, am I bringing my own towel? BYOT. I mean, I don't want to be thinking about bringing a towel, but I guess I could. I don't, I don't know how it works. I do think maybe they have some lockers or something maybe on the premises where you can put your stuff, but I just feel like that entrance fee is not going to be for me. That may make me bougie. So the next level up for the packaging is the comfort package. Now that's $77. And with that, you get a towel. Yeah, buddy, you get your towel. And then you get a free drink. I don't know if it's an alcoholic drink or not, but you get a free drink with the $77 package and you get your towel. So I think that would be more worth it, but Oh, and you also get an algae mask. You get an algae mask. So, oh, that's nice. Now, the next level up, which includes everything that I mentioned, plus a few other perks, is the premium package. Now, the premium package is $100. Now, with that, you get a bathrobe rental, you get slippers, and you get a reservation at the Blue Lagoon's restaurant, which I think is called Lava. You get a reservation. You're paying for the reservation. You're not paying for food there. <laughs> it's just a reservation. So uh, that's what you get for the $100 package. It's expensive, y'all. Like, it is. I know some of y'all are like, no, no thanks. But I think, you know, the experience may outweigh I don't want to say outweigh the cost, but I think the experience will probably be worth it. Now, if you are really feeling yourself, you can do the $500 uh, package and that's the luxury package. Now that package includes everything that I mentioned and then you get access to a premium lounge and you get a sample of skin products. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that there is, uh, I think some skincare research done over where the Blue Lagoon is. So they, you know, are definitely focused on skincare. However, with the masks that you get, in order to really see an effect from the algae masks and the, what is the other one? The silica mask, you probably would have to have more than one treatment. And I'm sure there are other treatments and spa treatments and services there that you can sign up for. So yeah, that's that. Now the busiest time to go to the Blue Lagoon is gonna be the summertime, but I think I would like to go in the winter time. And one of the people that work there was saying a great time to go would be during the snowstorm because you would get that contrast of being in the warm spring and then experiencing the snow. You know, I call that, that's how you get sick weather, but I would do it, I would do it. Now we pretty much have a good basis for the halo eye, but what I'm gonna have to do is see right here where you can't see the blue because of my fat hood. Um, I'm gonna have to just try to bring this up just a taste because like see when i look straight on you can't see the blue all the way across it disappears in the the skin flap that is my hood so i'm just gonna try to bring this up a little bit but not too high where you can't see that frig shade it's such a delicate balance That's a bit better. I'm just doing the same thing. 
So one thing, like if you have hooded eyes, I'm just uh, talking about the makeup for a second because that is kind of why we're here as well. You really have to stop, take a step back and monitor what you're doing because I used to be all up in here and then wondering why I couldn't see anything. Um, if you stop and monitor as you go along, you can make those slight adjustments as you go. So you just wanna try to have like a natural eye position. Cause if you start doing all this, you gonna be mad. You gonna be mad when you have a relaxed face because you're not gonna see anything. So this is more of what I'm going for. And then if I feel like I can't see that frig shade anymore, I can always take my brush and just ever so slightly just glaze it over here. Just, just a little bit. It's like a little dance. It's like a little dance with the colors. If that makes sense. Hopefully that looks good to y'all. So I've left this center area open here for the halo effect. If you really want that halo part to pop that spotlight, then you can take a little bit of conceal. Do I have some concealer? I'll show you. If you want the uh, center of the lid to stand out, you can always just take a little bit of concealer. Sorry, I look like crazy doing this. Cause see, it don't take much for me cause I have that fat hood. Because you can see that, hold on, let me see. You see how like that crease right there? So you want the concealer to get there. So some people like do this look up movement. I look down and like that. <laughs> All right, now you can see that it's above the crease and that's where you want it to be. So this isn't gonna be anything that's like super sharp. I don't want it to be sharp. I just want the blue to stand out a little bit. I don't like when people have the halo eye and it looks like a line. This is doing too much. I don't like that. If you like that, that's fine. I'm saying I don't like that on me. Just not, it's just not my thing. Sorry, I know that looks real crazy. <laughs> so I was using my finger, but you can also, I done got, see now I done got it too high. And then you can take a brush or you can take your finger. I'm sure some people that are really good at this are like, what the hell is he doing? And you can just pat it in. I'm not trying to have this sharp. Like I don't want it to be a sharp line. So I'm, I'm good. I wonder if you can bring alcohol into the, you probably can't, so never mind. So you probably wanna know how hot is the Blue Lagoon? The Blue Lagoon is about 99 to like 102 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's, it's pretty warm. Now, one of the videos I watched the lady was saying that the temperature can change like in different spots, you know, cause it is, like I said, it, it's a man-made lake that channels its water from a geothermal field. I don't know where that is, but it, it is natural, but the temperature um, does change in various places. But that's it about the lagoon. Let me know if y'all are still trying to go or do you want to go to like another hot spring? I, like, I don't know if the hot springs are just laying around and you can just go in them. How did he get here? Can y'all see him? I can't. He knocked out. He needed a nap because talking about, I'll get on this side. Can I get under your covers? I was like, you better put on them headphones and don't make a sound. I'm gonna be using the shade God's Waterfall. Here it is. And I'm just gonna be tapping that on to the concealer. And you know, just putting that concealer down gives you more of a, I don't know, clean base to work with because I did get some of the darker blue shade in the center area. So it's gonna stand out a little bit more. We'll see if I like it though. Cause I am gonna have to go back and clean it up just a little bit. But yeah, y'all, that's pretty much it about the Blue Lagoon. We're gonna go, have some drinks. We can rent a robe and some slippers, get a mud mask, an algae mask, all that good stuff, and then have dinner at the restaurant. Oh, we should check out the menu. I'm gonna do that in a minute, hold on. 
see what kind of stuff they have this is pretty this is going to turn out really pretty now again i'm going to have to clean up up here and on the sides of the halo so that it's like a more gradual uh transition but it'll be fine this is something i'm still learning how to do so i'm not leaving it like this don't be scared let's take a break really fast and see um the restaurant menu oh wait this is near me no, that's not the one i'm trying to go to hold on here it is lava restaurant oh it's closed right now oh they have a silica hotel oh is there a hotel nearby we might need to stay there mm. all right it says lava restaurant gourmet dining on the shores of a wonder of the world oh they have relaxed fine dining from open to close and you can dine in your robe until 1600 hours so what time is that okay oh so you can um stay in your robe till 4 p.m okay i'll take that oh i'm trying to go oh i did read that a lot of people do speak english there too oh okay and not only do they have the lava restaurant they have the moss restaurant the spa restaurant oh, hold on y'all put the makeup aside for a minute all right, let's see. So the lunch menu is two courses for $52. Three courses are $60. This is for lunch. I am for this langoustine soup, garlic marinated langoustine. Is that, that's um, lobster, right? Cod with barley, avocado, almonds, broccoli, and mussel sauce and creme brulee. Or you can have, that's the seafood menu. There's the Icelandic gourmet menu with Arctic char, lamb filet, and astar pangar which is and caramel which is mango chocolate mousse vanilla ice cream salted caramel i don't really eat dessert unless it's a brownie and then the vegan menu baked yellow and red beets grilled broccoli spring onion with quinoa icelandic berries and chocolate they do have a a la carte menu. let's get to dinner because that's what i need okay there's a tasting menu 83 dollars per person but it's served for the whole table it's four courses inspired by the Blue Lagoon surrounding landscape and created by our outstanding team of chefs. Oh, it doesn't tell us what it is. It's a four course tasting menu. No, I need a, I need a meal. And then you can add a selection of wines to complement each dish for an extra $49 per person. Oh, that's in European money, euros. So what's that? $49 in euros. Hold on, let me see. No, not for no extra $60 when I can buy a bottle of wine for $9.99. Oh, I might have to put it in my purse. Can't do that. Sorry. Nope. Let's move on. I mean, I would like to go though still. Because like, you know. All right. Moss Restaurant. This one, smart casual. I don't know what smart dress is. It says that Moss occupies the highest point at Blue Lagoon, Iceland, offering stunning views of the volcanic horizon. Now that sounds like something I'd like to see. Hold on. Set menus based on the finest, freshest local ingredients. Our five and seven course set menus change with the season, which means you don't have it on here. They start at $105 per person. Oh, and then they have a chef's table. Ooh, now I would like to do this. You are an honored guest as our chefs take you on a seven course expedition where purity and innovation are the hallmark hallmarks of an unforgettable feast. Hmm, that starts at $136 per person. This better not be like small plates because I'm not gonna be able to do that. So we have the Moss restaurant, the Lava restaurant, and then, I'm sorry y'all, this is not what we're supposed to be doing. Who doesn't wanna talk about the food? Oh, they're reopening in February, February 13th. They were closed. So there's the Spa restaurant. Now the Spa restaurant is a place to unwind and relax before, during, or after your spa journey. Enjoy the restaurant's enchanting ambiance and savory nourishment. Dine in your robe or fully clothed. No reservations are needed. Okay. There's an all, oh, here's the restaurant menu. Let's see. Okay. All right. They have miso soup. They have gravlax. What's that? Malt bread and sauce and dill. Ceviche, sushi, beef tataki. Caesar salad, cod chicken. All right, this might be more of what we're talking about. So then there's the cafe. That may be where we're going, y'all. Nourishment and enchantment. Oh, snacks. Never mind. 
Mm, damn snack. Now there are two hotels that it looks like are nearby. There's the Silica Hotel and then there is the Retreat Hotel. So yeah, that's nice. But these are gonna be expensive, really expensive. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to what we came for because we have to think about those food options. Y'all let me know, would y'all want to eat at the restaurant? Like, are y'all the type of people, like when you go on vacation, you're like, I'm just gonna go all out I'm, because you might not get back. Like, you might not get another trip to Iceland. I'm just gonna blend the uh, Niflheim, that dark blue shade on the outer edges and just a little bit in the crease to make the halo part just a little smoother. But we don't know if we would ever get back to Iceland or when we would get back. So are you the type that wants to go all out or are you like a frugal vacationer? I feel like if I'm gonna really be saving up, I probably would wanna just go all out if I know ahead of time. Like I would know, I would know this when we plan the trip. I'm not gonna pop up and be like, hey y'all, let's go to lava. Mm -mm, can't do that. I might just go to Subway really, cause but like when I was younger, like going to the movies, I would put a whole uh, Popeye shrimp basket in my my purse, you know, cause who's buying all the movie snacks? And I didn't even want snacks. That was before they um, were really selling like real food at the movie theater. And I want a meal. I don't need no cafe snacks. No thanks. No thank you. So you see what I'm saying? So kind of smooth out those edges just a little bit. I still could smooth it out up top. But now we can see that shimmer just a little bit. I'm just gonna continue to work with this just a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna do the inner corner. I really don't have anything else to say about Iceland, but I think if we did all of those activities that I've talked about in these past uh, four videos, I think it would be an amazing trip, especially if we were fortunate enough to catch those northern lights. I think that would make it for me. Um, I'm taking the Shade River Glacier and just putting that in the inner corner. Just gonna keep it real icy. Let me know what y'all think. Has anybody been to Iceland that's watching? I would love to know what your experience was. Or has anybody seen the northern lights? Because that, I just, I would love to catch it. Like I said, no matter how um, dramatic or not dramatic uh, the show would be, I always just love that. Oh, I wonder what the night like is life in Iceland. Like, do they have clubs and stuff? Tag, I probably could have done one more video, but I do have to move on, y'all. The good thing is that, you know, using this palette as much as I have, I'm really hoping that those of you who purchased the palette or are waiting for the palette. I really do hope that you have found some inspiration in the type of looks that, that you can do. I didn't even really combine like the fire and the ice, you know, I didn't even do that yet. So there are endless possibilities with this palette because of the color story. And that's something that I really, really do appreciate about it. Uh, let me just show you what we've got. And I'm just gonna line my eyes and I'm gonna put on some lashes. And then y'all, we are gonna have to head to the airport because we are nearing the end of this trip, y'all. So I'll be right back. Oh my goodness. <sighs> now he gonna wanna be up later. Talking about he took a nap. <gasps> okay, y'all, I'm back. This is it. So let's see. Hopefully it'll look good when they're closed, cause y'all know. This is my ice inspired look and the end of our trip to Iceland. I really hope you guys enjoyed this uh, one week, one destination series. Um, it's just a way for me to really use the makeup that I have because I have so much. And I'm just not trying to be somebody that's only using something one time and then you all may have the same thing. And then by the time, you know, you're playing around with your palettes, I've moved on to something else. And I want us to be kind of doing this together. I am really enjoying playing with my makeup and just learning along the way, like how to do my eyeshadow, what kind of looks I like, what kind of brands I like. Since I've started my channel, I've learned so much. Like, believe it or not, today 
I put like 10 palettes on, on Macari. I know I'm not gonna use these, I didn't touch them. I may have swatched them and I'm sure that there's, it could go to a better home, you know what I mean? I, I really wanna enjoy the makeup, I wanna enjoy the art, I wanna enjoy playing. So I hope you guys are down for another one week, one destination soon. A lot of people express Tokyo. Tokyo would be really good for the spring. Tokyo would be really good anytime. I'm just so thankful I found out about Nomad Cosmetics. I love the concept. The eyeshadows are great. And you know, through this, I've learned something. I think we all have about a country that we may or may not have planned to ever visit. So hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys liked the look. I thank you guys for taking out some of your time and giving it to me. And um, yeah, until I see you again, make sure you are being gentle with yourself, talking to yourself nice, stay safe, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Oh,